Hello my dear students and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video lesson, I'll be discussing about organic chemistry. I'll be talking about the introductory aspects to organic chemistry. Now, what is organic chemistry? Organic chemistry is simply the chemistry that deals with the study of carbon. Okay? Organic chemistry is the chemistry that deals with the study of carbon. Except or with the exception of their carbides, okay? With the exception of their carbides, their sulfides, their sulfides, their oxides, and also their carbonates, okay? Organic chemistry is the study that deals with carbons, with the exception of their carbides, sulfides, oxides, and carbonates. Now, carbon as an element have different unique properties. Now, the first unique property of carbon is what we call catenation. Is what we call catenation. Another, another unique property of carbon is what we call hybridization. Hybridization. Now, what is catenation? Catenation can be defined as the ability of an element to form long chains. Now, carbon is one element that can catenate, so it means that it can form long chain, irrespective of the kind of bond. It can be double or multiple bonds or even single bonds. Now, for catenation, you know, carbon forms long chains forms long chain. This is catenation. It can also be like this. This is also catenation. Irrespective of the type of bond, it can also be like this. Catenation. Now, other elements can also catenate, like the likes of ozone. Okay? Ozone catenate, which is given to be O3, and even phosphorus, phosphorus with P4. Okay, talking about ozone, the way it catenates, it's, it's like this. Okay, but for ozone, uh, but for phosphorus, it's catenate. You know, it's P4. We have four molecules of phosphorus, four atoms rather of phosphorus. Okay. Not only carbon catenate, but other elements like ozone, phosphorus also catenate. But carbon remains the most extensive catenator in organic chemistry. Now, talking about hybridization, what is hybridization? Hybridization simply means the mixing of pure orbitals to form new sets of equivalent orbitals. Now, the orbitals you are mixing, they have different energy levels. You are mixing orbitals of different energy levels to form new sets of equivalent orbitals with the same energy level. Now, that is hybridization. And these are some unique properties of carbon. Now, talking about hybridization for the first group of organic compounds called our K's. You know, this is our K. And alkenes are also called paraffins. Okay, alkenes also called olefins and alkynes. Okay, now even benzene. Now let's talk about their hybridization. You know, alkenes they have single bonds. Alkenes they have double bonds. Alkynes they have triple bonds. Now for benzene, benzene is aromatic. Benzene is aromatic in nature. Benzene is aromatic. This is benzene. Now, the hybridization for alkane, they are all sp3 hybridized. They are all sp3 hybridized. Alkanes are all sp3 hybridized. But for alkanes, they are sp2 hybridized. sp2 Hybridize while our kinds they are sp okay sp 
while benzene and sp2 hybridize so talking about the the number of hybridized orbitals in our cane they are simply four okay they are simply four like s p p p okay because you can see we have three p orbital and one s orbital making it four orbitals hybridized for our canes they are three which is s p p what for our canes is what Th two which is s p and benzene they are three which is s p p now basically these are the some sets of organic compounds which they have hybridization you can see our canes they are all single bonds and they are sp3 hybridized now basically let's talk about the classification of organic compounds the classification of organic compounds now organic compounds can be classified as aliphatic and aromatic compounds you know hydrocarbons basically now let's move further you know hydrocarbons okay can be classified as aliphatic or aromatic hydrocarbons now now let's draw a table for it this is hydrocarbon We have the aliphatic hydrocarbons and the aromatic hydrocarbons. The aliphatic hydrocarbons and the aromatic hydrocarbons. For your aliphatic, we have the cyclic and acyclic hydrocarbons. Now, talking about your cyclic hydrocarbons, we have examples like the cycloalkanes. While for your acyclic, it is divided into alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Now, basically, you can see for cyclic, we have cycloalkanes. For acyclic, we have alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. While for aromatic, they are simply benzene and its derivatives. Benzene and its derivatives. So basically, you can see for a compound to be aliphatic, it means that it has open chains. Okay, for a compound to be aliphatic, it means that it has open chain. Now, this is what I mean. For a compound to be aliphatic, it has open chains and also it has cyclic nature but does not have the benzene ring it has cyclic nature but does not have the benzene ring for a compound to be aliphatic now for a compound to be aromatic it means that it has a closed ring or a closed chain basically it has one or more benzene ring now for a compound to be called an hydrocarbon and hydrocarbon basically contain carbon and hydrogen only for a, for an hydrocarbon but if something is a non-hydrocarbon non-hydrocarbon it means that it consists of other elements like oxygen nitrogen sulfur with addition with carbon and oxygen carbon and um, hydrogen rather so basically for you to be hydrocarbon you might contain oxygen you might contain nitrogen you might contain sulfur and with the addition with the addition of of hydrogen and carbon for a compound to be called a non hydrocarbon now basically these are the introductory aspects to the concept of organic chemistry. Thanks for watching.